All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of Coach Peace Perspective. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about focus, right? So that's our keyword, focus. Think about focus management over time management. And time management is important. It's something we hear about probably from the time that we're young, hear about time management. And I think the people who are highly successful, who are able to uh, juggle a lot at once and keep it going, probably are pretty good at time management. But I want to break it down even further to focus management. Because really, if we're going to manage time, we can do that more efficiently whenever we manage our focus. So I want to kind of reverse engineer this first. Think about the things that are stealing your time or that are stealing your focus. All right. So maybe it's your phone. Maybe you get into a workflow and your email goes off and you're having to check your email. Uh, maybe, you know, you don't have a sacred place to work. So you have a place that you're trying to get important work done and you're constantly being interrupted. Every time we have those interruptions, and there have been a number of scientific studies done on this, it is very difficult for us to get back into workflow. It is very difficult for us to refocus and to get things done. There's usually a long period of time there. So for example, those of you who work in an office, again, maybe you're getting work done, you get an email, uh, you get a text message, someone who works with you stops by, maybe you work from home, right? I have four children myself, one of the kids pops in. Now there's a break in focus. What do you do? Sometimes we get up, we go get a drink, you come back, you check your emails, you check your social media, you do all those things, and then you get back to work. So you've wasted 15, 20 minutes. I believe in and I love being able to hyper focus. Okay. Sometimes it takes a little discipline to get there, but once you get there, hyper focus, you can get a lot more done. The next thing I want to talk about is this. Okay, we want to minimize the things that still our focus, but then we got to decide what are the things that are, are important for our focus. Think about process over outcome. You know, a lot of times as coaches, as business people, whatever it is, we are thinking about the wins. We're thinking about the desired outcome. And really those things aren't controllable. We can prepare really well. We can put ourselves in a position to win or to get the desired outcome. But that all comes from system and process. And I'll speak about system on another podcast episode whenever I'm doing these short, solo, uh, quick, short time podcast episodes. But think about the things that you need to focus on when it comes to process. You can't control outcomes, but you can control your daily process. The things that you do daily, over and over, consistently over time, those things compound, right? So I think we've all heard of the compound effect and we might make little incremental gains slowly, 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 and then boom, we make a big jump, all right? That comes from focusing on the process. So whatever it is that you are trying to get great at, I'm a coach and I coach wrestling. So with my athletes, we have a process, right? We have a strength and conditioning process. We have a technique process. We have a drilling process. Uh, we have, hopefully, you know, if the athletes do it right, a process of how they're going to eat and put healthy foods in their body, how they're going to sleep really the overall lifestyle that's going to put them in a position to have the greatest outcome or the desired outcome. Okay. But it all comes back to process. So minimize distractions so that you can focus, find the things that are really important for you to focus on, hyper-focus in those areas, develop a great process. And if it's working, you can always make little improvements. If it's not working, go back, reevaluate, see why it's not working. And then again, make little improvements and create a better system or a better process that's going to help you get to the place that you want to be. Oftentimes, we need to go to someone who's an expert in that area, ask them, see what they do. We can now add that to our process. And those are the things that we focus on so that we're not wasting time, right? Uh, we've probably all seen the, the picture of someone climbing a ladder, but it's on the wrong building. So we don't want to climb a ladder and get to the top, but it's the top of the wrong building. And we don't achieve the goal that we were trying to achieve. That being said, there's a lot of great things that happen along the way um, during the journey. Okay, so it's not just about the outcome. Although we do want to win, we do want to get you know great outcomes. That comes from process. Hyperfocus is good. Here's something I like to do because I want to make it tangible. For me, I like to do lists. Some people don't like to do lists. I like them for a couple of reasons. Um, some people say, "Ah, oh, to do lists aren't good. Like they're just." giving you a false sense of accomplishment and you're just getting little dopamine hits here and there. What's wrong with that? I like that personally, but more importantly for me, I like to have a to-do list because I live a crazy busy lifestyle. 
Uh, I'm a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm a podcaster. I have four children. My wife is a coach. I'm a mindset coach. So I'm often doing mindset calls, working with athletes and universities and things like that. So there's a lot going on, right? I have to create do a to-do list or else I would forget the things that I need to do, right? So the calendar is important and the to-do list. So for me, this is a process that works very well. You have to find the process, and there's that word again, process, that works for you. So I, first thing in the morning, like to create my to-do list, okay? So this is when I very first get to work. I'll write down all the things I need to do. And let me back up real quick and say this. Processes often start the night before. So some of the things that we need to do to get really good at or that we need to get accomplished those things can be set up the night before. Before I go to bed, if I have something on my mind or my brain, I want to be able to actually lay down, relax, and go to sleep and have a deep sleep. I don't want to forget it, but I don't want to be dwelling upon it, and it keeps me awake. So I'll often grab my phone real quick, and I just email myself. That way, I don't forget the important thing I need to do the next day. So I'll literally title my email, to do, and I'll type in there a number of things I know I need to do tomorrow. Okay, I send it. Boom. It's amazing how freeing that is mentally. So the next day when I get to work, I start writing out my to-do list. I usually check the email. I see those things and I write them in. Okay. Here's my suggestion on completing the to-do list. Um, some people go by the eat the frog method, which I think is great. All right. Which means find the most difficult thing and do it first. I actually like to back up a step on that and get a win. So it comes back to the whole make your bed first thing in the morning, right? Because it's getting a win for the day. It's something that you've accomplished for the day. Wins produce other wins, all right? Success begets success. So whenever I start my to-do list, I'll find something that's important that needs to be done, but that's fairly simple and easy to do. And I'll knock that out real quick, okay? Now I've got that dub. I got that win. That thing is done. Guess what? I'm on a roll. Then I jump in and eat the frog. Then I jump in and find the most difficult and important thing I need to you know, go to work on or get accomplished for that day. And I go to work on it. Once I have that thing done, bam, you really have momentum going. You're really in the zone or in the flow. And something else may pull you away. Maybe you have meetings or whatever it is. Okay. But then you come back to the to-do list, check it later on. You might have to add to it, right? More things come up during the day. So I make sure I write those in. But then I just, as the day goes on, I mark all those off. And you have to, I'm maybe a little obsessive compulsive. You might be the same way. You have to forgive yourself if you don't get all those things done. Some things need to be put off till tomorrow. And there's a saying I love, if you can do it today, do it today, right? It's that simple. We don't overcomplicate it. So if I can do it right now, uh, that dish, I'm at home and that dish that I could go and rinse off and put it in the dishwasher, or you could just leave it sitting there dirty. If you can do it right now, do it right now, right? So rinse that sucker off and put it in the dishwasher or even hand wash it and put it away, okay? Or put it up there to dry. So if we can do it now, do it now. But on my to-do list, do something fairly simple and easy that absolutely has to be done today. Get the win, get momentum going. Then eat the frog, do the most difficult thing. When that's done, then you're gonna start to knock out the rest of the to-do list. If you don't get it done, those things can move to tomorrow, okay? And forgive yourself for not getting them done. You don't have to like freak out if you don't get them done. Tomorrow, we'll finish those things, okay? Repeat the process. Do that consistently over time. You will be able to focus. You'll be able to get a lot of things done. And then ultimately, that helps you get wins. That helps you move toward your goals, your desired outcomes. And it all comes back to this focus management over time management. And really, they're not separate. The better I can focus and I can manage my focus and hyper-focus, the better I'm able to manage my time. All right, y'all, this has been another episode, uh, another episode of Coach Pete's Perspective. This is one of my solo episodes. All right, we'll be back next week with interviews and then continue on once a week with the solo episodes. And if you find value in this, if you like it, I would love to hear from you. I'd like to get your comments. Uh, please share with others. Share on social media. I usually put highlights on my Instagram at Coach Chad Parks. So I make little highlight clips, put them on my, on my Instagram. Throw that up in your stories. Tag me in it send it to somebody who needs some uplifting or needs a little bit of guidance that needs a little bit of perspective. I'll also throw these, I don't really promote my YouTube, but I also throw these clips on YouTube most of the time, at least a couple of little highlight clips. So please do those things and whatever platform you listen on, if you're finding value, go and give us a five-star review. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. May God bless you, smile upon you and give you peace. Till next time, we're out.